Ex-racists of Reddit, what made you change your mind? Sesame Street. I'm not even joking. Was raised in a slightly racist household in a pretty racist state. Seeing kids of all colors playing together made me wonder why my mom wouldn't let me play with certain people. It kind of snowballed from there. Edit, I am so happy that my top post is about Sesame Street's fight against racism. Was raised in a racist and close community. When I joined the army and met different people, I grew up and moved out of my parents' house. I'm Asian and I grew up kind of resenting my parents for being different than my classmates' parents and I hated that they didn't know how to speak English. I had to translate for them all the time, call phone companies, go to the DMV with them, translate documents, etc. and I grew resentful. So when I was in elementary school I told them that I wasn't Korean but that I'm a full-fledged American and I wasn't going to speak Korean anymore. I also hated interacting with other Asians that reminded me of my parents, aka textbook internalized racism. It wasn't until middle school when I had a teacher that validated my culture and actively tried to communicate with my parents that I realized that bilingualism is an asset and something I should be proud of. Now I'm going into teaching and have done some translating work on the side. People say my Korean is super fluent for an American-born Korean and I really have my parent to thank for that. Now I'm super regretful for hurting them like that. Edit, I should note that they are not fluent but can speak conversationally edit, yes. I have apologized to my parents about my actions and behavior in the past, the biggest way I was able to so was by dedicating my college commencement speech to them. I'm extremely regretful and sorry for my actions and I still help them with translating and I'm happy to do so. I am incredibly proud of them and as an adult I'm now aware of their sacrifices. Edit, holy crap this blew up. Thank you for the gold and silver. I can't reply to everything but I read it all. It's really comforting to know that I am not alone and tie for the show, book, movie recommendations smiley face. So, to address a couple things, a lot of people have asked, why is it that a lot of Asians go through this a lot more than other minority groups? My personal hypothesis behind this is that the model minority myth, that basically states that Asians are better than other minority groups, ostracizes Asians to be unlike their other minority peers. It creates othering and a us versus them mindset. The model minority is a BS term coined by a white journalist to basically describe Asians that have successfully assimilated into American culture, unlike their other minority peers, as a way to create tension amongst minority communities. Asians, usually second gen, take this stereotype and see their parents as the failed model minority BC they were unable to assimilate into American culture, thus the internalized racism occurs. But this is BS. The model minority idea is a myth. TL, doctor, being forced to be racist by family stopped me from actually being racist. Also my mom. I had a super racist grandpa and uncle. Both pieces of shit supported by my grandma. I would frequently stay with them while both my parents worked on Saturdays. I would pretend around them when I was younger because I wanted them to like me. I don't remember this story but my mom will tell it so proudly if the subject of racism comes up, she was very different from her dad, brother. I was maybe 6 or 7 when one day I was crying when my mom picked me up and the whole way home I just sobbed like my heart was broken. I wouldn't tell her what was wrong but I cried quietly the whole way home and went right into my bed and laid down crying. My dad and her came in and asked me what was wrong. I still didn't want to tell them and my dad got a little gruff with me, boy you tell me what's wrong right now, if somebody hurt you or told you not to tell me, and I guess I started crying loudly for the first time and blurted out grandpa and uncle Chuck said I can't be friends with Malcolm anymore because he is a dirty NR, my uncle made me call him and say that to him. My mom immediately flew into a rage. She went down there and from what I told beat the living shit out of her brother, told her dad that I would not be coming over anymore and that he was no longer invited to any family events. She then drove to my friend's house with blood from my uncle's nose still on her shirt. Apologized profusely for what happened and told them the story and that I had been crying the whole time because my uncle made me do that. We had dinner the next day and instead of going to my grandpa's house on Saturdays I ended up going to my friend Malcolm's house. 
Note, I say had because my grandpa is dead and later in life I told my uncle who never changed that he's not my uncle anymore when he called my two years old half Mexican niece SC. He now has a half Mexican grandson but from what I hear he hasn't really changed. Edit, holy shit this blew up, did not expect that. Answers to frequent questions Malcolm and I grew apart when my family moved away, we eventually moved back but his family had moved by then. I'm not going to type out the full word but if you google Mexican slurs you can find it yourself. My mother says she'll adopt all of you, no smoking in the house and don't drink the last Mountain Dew my grandfather actually did put in an attempt to try after that day. The relationship was eventually repaired before he died in 99. He actually married a former nun and she shaped him up before he died. Straight up smacked his knuckles with a ruler once. Uncle shithead is still a shithead. My uncle used to be the most racist person I knew and it drove me crazy, but he is an old white man and set in my ways. Is what he would say when confronted. It all changed the day his great-granddaughter was born. His granddaughter had married a black man and he was unaccepting until that baby was born. She had him wrapped around her pinky finger from her first breath. Since then there are several mixed children in the family. It's awesome to see the difference in his behavior. He genuinely loves them all and accepts the racially different spouses of his grandchildren and their children. If he hears anyone being racist he shuts it down. Oh man. I worked a a doctor's office a few years ago. We had a patient come in, white lady, carrying a newborn black baby. I mean he was like two days old. We chatted a little bit, and she told me she had been on a waiting list to adopt a baby for years. She had gotten a call the night before, saying a woman in Detroit had just given birth and she wants to give up the baby. They asked if she wanted him and explained he was black. She was so excited. She got to the hospital right away. But she told me she had called her parents on the drive over to inform them of the good news. They were elated at first. Until they realized their grandchild was going to be black. She told me her parents said that she either chooses them or the baby, because they won't be related to a N-G-G-E-R. She said bye, hung up the phone with no regrets. She was so in love with that baby. He was a cute little guy. College roommate was Muslim. Definitely was not a terrorist. Kinda already knew my paps was wrong about that but when you live with someone for an entire year it takes you from kinda already knew to holy shit that way of thinking is fucked up. I never made the choice really to be racist, but I grew up in South Mississippi and my family wasn't overtly racist, but they were the kind to say racist things behind closed doors and didn't allow us to watch TV shows such as The Cosby Show or Fresh Prince and definitely no rap music in the house. I absolutely fell in love with a lot of black artists in the early 90s, I loved the hip-hop scene at the time and holy shit Fresh Prince was the best sitcom on television. I played football with 80% black guys and worked at Popeye's Chicken with over half the staff being black. I guess you can say my own real-world exposure despite their attempt to shelter me changed me. I cringe at some of the vernacular I used in my early youth, as the n-word was the same as black in my house, I literally was not raised to know that was a bad word. I'm glad that from the age of maybe 12 on I learned to love all people on my own. I went away to college. I was a kid in a racist family. N-bombs were thrown around the dinner table regularly. I had really only met a few African Americans in my whole life. I was also the first in my family to go to college other than my brother to seminary for the cult my family is in which I don't count. My friend Richard Redacted was my first black friend. I think he only liked me at first because he had a crush on my friend Amy and she would always be at my parties. But we ended up friends for four years. I'm naturally sort of empathetic and am good at putting myself in others' shoes. It just sort of dawned on me very early on that I wouldn't speak or act that way if he was around so I just decided I should never act that way. It took me a little while to forgive myself for being garbage, but I was a kid and literally didn't know any better. Oh yeah, and I fired my shitty family. I haven't talked to Rich in over 20 years. I moved 3,000 miles away after college and as you might expect from his name, it is basically impossible to Google him. If you are out there rich, thanks. Eddie, to remove full names per mods. A guy I worked with said he was neo-Nazi as a teenager, and ended up in prison somehow. 
He hated Jews for some reason, and blacks. He was never clear on why, just that he had so much hatred in his heart, and that was his outlet. He was in prison for many years. I think he almost killed somebody by beating them up. So, many years later and in prison there was a mentor-type staff there, and this one lady was so helpful to him, and she cared about him so much that it really started to get into his head the idea of being a positive person. Then, he learned that she was Jewish, and he said he couldn't believe she was so kind and caring despite the fact he was a claimed neo-Nazi. From that day he swore to be a better person, he learned his lesson. He's a pretty great guy these days, doing his family thing and making sure his son grows up with lots of love and all that he didn't have. Really remarkable, great guy. My grandma grew up in Virginia in the 1900s. Being racist is just the default setting. Nana loved her family more than anything, though. So at one point in the late 1980s, she met her first not 100% white grandkid, and discovered she still loved him. She made astounding late-life progress accepting that darker-skin-toned people were not only people, but family, friends and welcome in her house. 